This is a made in Japan Fender Stratocaster and the serial number dates it to the mid to late 80s, 84 to 87. And it's a 60s reissue Strat in a Lake Placid Blue. Pretty much all original except uh, somebody did change the tremolo. This one originally came with the Fender factory tremolo. Uh, and you can see those four screw holes were from the locking nut that used to be on it. It's got the small head stock. It's got a really dense rosewood uh, fretboard. It's really amazing looking. Uh, we've already polished the frets and cleaned the fretboard. So this is ready for setup. Okay, I have sighted down the neck already, and I do see some relief in the neck. But uh, to be honest, I always just like to measure. I don't really know exactly what I'm working with till I get a measurement. So, measuring at the eighth fret, and this has zero .010 zero uh, relief in it. I'm gonna turn the truss rod just a tiny bit and I'll take out a little bit of that relief. Okay, we're just gonna loosen a tiny bit on this guy, just to release any tension in the neck, and then tighten maybe a little more than half a turn. Sliding down the neck, looking flatter. How much of a difference that made. So the way I measure is I fret on the 17th, I've got a capo on the 1st, and then I measure on the 8th fret. I'm checking with point zero zero eight now. Just about fits point zero zero eight. Before I get much further in the setup, I figured I'd just take a look under the, uh, the tremolo cover in back here and see what that looks like. Yeah. This tremolo is tightened down pretty tight and that's generally how I like to just have them set so there's less chance that you can put it out of tune just by leaning your hand on the tremolo and stuff like that. Um, by the way, if you're down there making a comment, feel free to smash the like button if you like what you're seeing or getting anything out of it. So after I turn the truss rod, the first thing I like to check out is just where the action is. And this is sitting right around 0 .060 at the 12th fret, which is pretty decent action. And it's actually playing okay, but I don't like some of the buzz or just um, not ringing going on in the uh, the low frets down here. So I'm gonna actually take a look at where <clears throat> the Allen uh, adjustment back here is set and oftentimes what I find is people have uh, adjusted them kind of the wrong way. So I was trying to so. remember what you call this adjustment. It's the micro tilt even though it doesn't say micro tilt um, next to it here. So I don't see a bunch of space like somebody's really used it much yet. It, you can tell if somebody's tightened this down and pushed the back of the neck up, then you can actually see a little extra space sometimes where the body and neck meet. I don't see that here, but I'm just going to loosen. You don't have to loosen the neck screws if you're just loosening. I think it was all the way loosened. Just to be sure, I will make sure these screws are tight. Okay, yeah, so I checked and nothing really changed uh, as far as the string height. So that had not been engaged. I'm gonna go ahead and try to tighten it a little bit. I don't like to use the micro tilt unless I have to, but it seems like in this case, with the buzzing down the low frets, it's possible it might help. The way I adjust these is I make sure the neck is loose. I 
I've got a cape on the first fret. There, so it's popped up. Now, when I tighten this, remember if you're loosening, you're not going to hurt the neck. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to take the body and neck apart if you're just loosening uh, the micro tilt. But if you're tightening, what you're doing is you're you're pushing a nut straight into the neck, basically, and that that changes the angle of the neck. So you don't want them to be tight together because you can hurt that neck. I'm gonna try giving it. I don't know. Full turn. It's kind of a pain because then you have to tighten it back up and then check where it's at. Be careful now when I tighten these screws, especially these back two. You basically got something preventing the neck from completely uh, tightening there. And if you just like crank it down. I don't know, you could hurt something. So I tighten them, but I don't tighten them crazy hard. Now, yeah, we got really low action. The strings are just sitting on the frets, so I'll be adjusting the action. So I did this off camera, but basically what I had to do, uh, I had tightened this a little too much, and so I took it down by increments until I found a place where the strings uh, are at a good level and not buzzing down here and that was my main goal was to get rid of some of that plonky uh, Freddy type buzzing sound now that everything's ringing real well all over the neck the only thing left to do is set the action and I like to get it to point zero six zero at the 12th fret, it's usually my goal, sometimes a little lower, sometimes 0 0.050. Yeah, but adjusting that Allen wrench on the back of the neck can really make a huge difference. It's, it's a very subtle thing, you just want... <laughs> You want to take it in little quarter inch, uh, quarter turns, is what I found. The first time I turned it, I think I turned it uh, one and a half, maybe one or one and a half turns, and that was that was too much. So it just needed a little tweaking to get in a place where it was happy. Okay, so we're getting close with this one. Um, I like to play all over the neck and just listen for any kind of buzzing or strange sounds. I did notice. I mean, it's pretty minor, but on the fifth fret of the B string, just a little Freddy sounding. And sure enough, when I checked with my fret rocker, the sixth fret, yeah, the sixth fret is sitting just a tiny bit high underneath. Let's see, the B and the G. Yeah, it just extends that one little area just around the B and the G string on the sixth frets. So I use one of these neck cradles from Stu Mac. It kind of, when I'm doing this, it keeps the neck nice and sturdy and keeps it from moving anywhere. So you can get one of these fret calls and they have a little place for the fret in there. And just sits over the fret and it will not hurt it as long as you don't pound too hard. So I'm just going to do under the B and the G string because that's the only place it was sitting high. And when I check with the fret rocker, the B under the B string, it's not rocking anymore. Maybe a tiny bit under the G. Okay, so got rid of that. Yep. Much better. 
both the B and the G are ringing good there now. I actually like to check the next fret after I've, so I pounded down the sixth fret right there, but then you want to check the seventh after that, just to make sure, because once you've lowered the sixth, sometimes the seventh is now sitting a little higher in relation, if that makes any sense. But that is not the case here. One other little thing I like to fix when I see it is just the string height at the down near the nut. And these are all real nice. I just noticed the B string was sitting up a little bit higher than the other strings. So I'm just going to take a nut file and even that out. Okay, so I've got that one nut slot sorted. And this is playing good all over the neck. Just gonna set the intonation. That's actually quite close. Just a tiny bit sharp at the twelfth. You got it all nice and intonated. Check the electronics. Just listening for any dirty pots or anything like that. Sounds good. Now the volume between the pickups. Here's the bridge. Middle. Bridge just a tiny, just a tiny. I think the volume is about the same. Jack is solid, this baby's ready to go. And just to summarize what we did on this one. It's got 10 gauge strings, check the electronics, check neck relief, change the strings, polish the fret, set string height, set intonation, check pickup height, polish the guitar, and down tuned it for shipping. String height is 0 .060 at the 12th fret, neck relief is 0 .009 measured at the 8th fret. Again, if you got anything out of this, please hit like or give me some kind of comment down below. Thanks.